Hey friends, and welcome back to Plant-Based Health Coaching with me, Becky. If you're new here, welcome. Today we are in my kitchen and I am excited to show you my recipe for seitan wings. If you're not familiar with seitan, it is a very popular plant-based protein source. So it's made of vital wheat gluten and I'll show you the one that I buy in a little bit here. Making the wings is super simple and I'm gonna make them barbecue style and throw them in a really delicious ramen salad. Before we get to cooking, please go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate your support and it helps you out so you don't miss future easy plant-based recipes or coaching tips from me. Thanks so much for being here and let's get cooking. So as I mentioned, we are going to use vital wheat gluten for our seitan wings. And as you can see right on here, vital wheat gluten is 70 to 80% protein. That's because it is the protein from wheat. As you can see, the only ingredient is vital wheat gluten, which is pretty cool. As you can see, about one fourth of a cup of the vital wheat gluten flour contains, oh, well, it's not easy to see like that. <laughs> It contains 23 grams of protein. So just one fourth of a cup is 23 grams of protein. That's pretty awesome. The other thing that you'll need is some sort of steamer. And I, oh, that looks really dirty even though I just wiped it off. <laughs> I don't have like a steamer basket. So what I like to do is use my air fryer and then I'm gonna put it on the bake setting and the temperature at 375 and I'll just put it at 15 minutes. These are only gonna steam for about five to 10 minutes, but that gives us plenty of time. So I'm gonna hit start, or actually, oh my gosh. No, Derek must have used this and you know what? Whatever, it's just a Beyond Burger in there, so I'm gonna use it. <laughs> it's all vegan, right? Extra seasoning. And I'm just cooking for us, of course. If I was cooking for guests, I would properly clean this. <laughs> but I'm gonna add, Maybe that was too much water, let's see. I just wanna add a layer of water to cover the bottom, and yeah, I don't want it over the basket, so I'm gonna dump a little bit out. Cool, so I'm just gonna add some water to the basket, and then that's preheating to 375, so I'll let that be. One other thing I'm doing is I'm boiling water because I'm gonna add some easy ramen as well. I love having a ramen salad bowl in the summer. It's summer here in Colorado. These are super simple and easy. They cook up in like two minutes. This brand is great. This water started boiling already, so I just turned off the heat. I added the ramen. I'm gonna leave the seasoning packets out because they're a little bit salty and I just feel like I will have enough salt in the barbecue sauce. So I turned the heat off and I'm just gonna let those sit and cook. All right, so let's get to making our seitan wings. And one thing that I wanna mention because I just showed you the ramen that has you know, some wheat in it. Um, usually I, when I'm putting together a meal, I really try to balance the macros and just make sure that I'm feeling good after. And even though vital wheat gluten comes from, like it has gluten in the name, the carbohydrate level is very low, as you can see. So. Um, just want to mention that I think it's a common misconception that with vital wheat gluten uh, people think it's like condensed bread or something um, but not true it's the protein from wheat okay so here we go we are going to add three-fourths of a cup of the vital wheat gluten to your bowl and then you can add a fourth of a cup of whatever flour that you like I currently have some whole wheat organic flour on hand here that I need to use up. It's been sitting in the pantry for a while. I have used gluten-free flour in the past. When I use, uh, I use that to make things like buffalo wings or, uh, or cauliflower wings, I should say, or like breading because I think that gluten-free flour can make things crispier. But when it comes to the vital wheat gluten, I do typically use a, uh, like a whole wheat flour because I just found that the gluten-free flour made it kind of mushy. All right, so now we've got our flours in there. Let's add some spice. And you can absolutely measure the spice if you want. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it here. 
I love adding garlic powder to pretty much anything, so I'm gonna add a good amount of that. It's probably like half a teaspoon. Uh, and then I'm gonna add some smoked paprika too. Maybe that's a fourth of a teaspoon. You can kind of play around with flavors like you like. I also think that this recipe is nice with some fresh ground pepper in there. And then I'm gonna add some sea salt as well, just to bring out the other flavors. All right, so I'm gonna stir this up, mix it up a little bit. Some people add turmeric to recipes that mimic like a chicken wing. I don't really feel the need to do that, and I think it can throw the flavor off a little bit. All right, so now add two thirds of a cup of warm water, stir it all together, and you'll start to see that this becomes a dough. So we almost want it to look like a really nice bread dough. It'll be very thick, of course, and it might be hard to stir at some point. Sometimes I'll just get in there with my hands. It's okay if it looks a little bit dry, but overall we want like a consistent dough ball here. All right, so we have our dough ball. I'm gonna mix it with my hands a little bit more. And there we go. So let's put this bowl here. All right, so the air fryer has preheated. So the next step here, you're gonna take your dough ball and then you can, well, that was a small piece. You can tear it into bite-sized pieces and I like to like fold it over itself a little bit. I think that this can give some really nice texture. When people are cooking with the vital wheat gluten dough and making something like that would mimic, say like a chicken breast or a steak, they would twist this whole dough ball and tie it um, just to give some like extra texture and layers there. And so that's kind of what I'm doing now. Do, do, do. Almost making like little knots, which again, you don't have to do. You can just tear it off and put it right in here. But I think it can be kind of nice texture wise to do this. This is where we need some like background elevator music. Oh, actually, usually I do cook with music on. Alexa, turn on lo-fi beats. Oh. Alexa, turn on lo-fi beats. Hmm. I don't know that one. What? Alexa, turn on summer lo-fi beats. Lo-fi beats, a similar song on Amazon Music. There. Is that third time's a charm? <laughs> um, we've got all of these in here and they're nicely spaced out. Again, I don't want the water to actually touch these, but help with the steaming of it. So I'm going to put them back in the air fryer. So there we go. And it is set for 10 minutes. So at about halfway through, I'm going to check these and you basically want them to be steaming and not too browned. And I'm going to flip them halfway through. All right, now that those are steaming, I'm going to check on the ramen. It's looking good and the consistency is excellent so that was just a few minutes sitting after boiling the water here so I'm gonna drain these and I can't do it one-handed <laughs> but I'll be right back okay so I just drained the ramen and then I put it back in here and it's not um, it won't get too soft or anything even though it's still pretty warm um, so yeah I just love that idea of cooking ramen it uses a little less energy too and again, I didn't add the seasoning packets in here. I think we'll have enough with the barbecue sauce. So now that that is done and the wings are cooking, I'm going to chop up some veggies for our bowls. All right, so I have two nice big salad bowls here. Of course, I'm gonna make food for Derek as well. One quick hack I wanna share with you is I went to the store <coughs> excuse me, really late last night. It's been, our fridge was pretty bare of fruits and veggies, so I stocked up and I set myself up for success because I bought this like easy salad starter kit and I don't do this all the time. I try to reduce plastic consumption, but these are so nice in a quick pinch. 
when you don't feel like you have the time to chop up a bun, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a ton of different veggies. So they're super nice for just really quick go-to meals, especially if you have had um, a hard time with trying to find space for food prep and keeping things like lettuce or shredded carrots and stuff like that on hand. They can just be really nice, quick solutions. All right, look how giant this broccoli is. <laughs> it's organic, it's like the biggest organic broccoli I've seen, it's crazy. So I'm just gonna chop up a couple broccolis. Oh, and if you watch my last video, you know that my dogs love broccoli. It's so funny, you'd think it's like the last, ooh, the last thing the dogs would like to eat, <laughs> but they love it. So I'll have to, they just walked in the kitchen here, I'll have to treat them to some broccoli. So I'm gonna split this up. And then if you missed it on my last video, I'm not gonna use this whole broccoli stem because I still have uh, florets on here. But when it is done with, when it's done with, I do like to either shave the stem and then chop it up for a stir fry. It's got like a really nice crunch to it. The outside is just kind of tough to get through. Um, but it also works great to quarter the stem and then I freeze it in bags and they make great little dog bones. My dogs love them. I will actually grab one for them right now. So you can see these are the frozen broccoli stems. Hey Jeffrey, here's your broccoli. Good boy. Here's your broccoli. Good girl, Hera. All right, and then I have half a tomato from yesterday, so I'm gonna cut this up. One of my goals when I'm putting together a meal is to make it as colorful as possible. When you eat lots of color, whether it's within a meal or throughout your day, when you're eating the rainbow, you know that you are getting a wonderful variety of different nutrients. All of the different colors of these foods tell us something about what nutrients are in them. Like we've all heard about carrot having uh, vitamin A or beta carotene. That's where that orange color comes from. And I'm gonna give the dogs these little pieces cause they love it. Here you go. All right, oop, I let my timer go way too long. Okay, so I cooked these for way too long. They are very hard on the outside. Shoot, man, that went fast. It's hard to film and cook at the same time. So these got a little bit dried out on the outside. You definitely don't want that to happen, but I think that we can save it with the next step. So I'm just gonna let these sit while I finish uh, chopping up the veggies and I'll come back to them in a little bit and see how it's going. So basically what happened is all of the water down here pretty much evaporated and if I had checked it halfway through I would have turned these so that the top wasn't so crispy because the bottom is actually perfect but no worries we'll let them rest for a little bit and then I'll come back to it in a second of course when you're making something like this you can absolutely make it your own use what you have in the fridge already um, Use the veggies that you like too. You don't have to eat spinach if you don't like spinach or cook the veggies. I'm just doing this the really fast way because I don't have a ton of time. All right, again, I am using my hands because it's just Derek and I, and of course I've washed my, washed my hands. Um, so I'm gonna add the ramen noodles into each of our bowls. All right, and I'm just gonna toss this together all right, so for these, I'm just gonna add a little bit of tamari. You can also add lime juice if you have it. I have lemon, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of that too. It's like a nice little zing in the bowls. I also love adding coconut milk mixed with sriracha for these types of bowls. It is so good. I just don't have coconut oil on hand, or <laughs> coconut. 
Did I say coconut oil? Coconut milk on hand. Otherwise I would just kind of pour that over and then put some sriracha in here too and then mix it together. And it's like this lovely, delicious, creamy, slightly spicy sauce. So I highly recommend that if you have coconut milk on hand. All right, so I am putting this pan over medium heat and you can add a little bit of oil if you like. So I'm gonna do that here. Let's see, I really like these reusable spray bottles. It's nice, there's avocado oil in here. All right, so I'm adding avocado oil and letting that heat up. Let's check on these wings. All right, they have softened, softened up a little bit as they've been sitting here, so that's good. All right, you can see it's more squishy, less like super crunchy like it was before, so I think we can save these. <laughs> they are really not that complicated. It's just that I lost track of time while I was filming, so it is what it is. I've heated the pan over medium heat and I wanna spread these out. You can hear that sizzling away, so I'm gonna let these cook for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. If you double this recipe, which is super easy to do and a great idea for meal prepping during the week, I would just suggest doing this in stages. And you can even do this step and then wait to add sauce to your uh, wings until later. Let's check on these. Oh yeah, so you can see there's more nice brown forming. Pretty good. I'm gonna let them do their thing. And let's see, I grabbed this. I love this Japanese barbecue sauce. What else do we have? Oh yeah, you could add hot sauce if you wanted. Um, this stuff is also so good. Fermented chili sauce. It's a little spicy for Derek, so I'm not gonna use that today. Um, of course, you could just use sriracha or you could make like a nice peanut sauce. Um, use Thai chili, whatever you want. But for these wings, I'm gonna add a lot. Oh, add a lot. I guess I will need to use the garlic chili paste too. I need a little bit more here. Okay, good size spoonful going right into the pan. And then I'm just gonna stir these up so that they are evenly coated in the sauce. And the sauce should thicken up really nicely as it sits in the pan too. You can already see that happening on the wings. Because I'm filming, they didn't get as you know evenly coated as normally, but um, of course, when you're only focused on this in your kitchen and not the uh, video camera like I am, it should go a little bit smoother. Okay, so we've got our delicious, very crispy on the outside wing, and look, they pull apart. They're so good. Ooh, and this is a little like, the sauce is kind of sticky like you want it to but crunchy on the outside. These are awesome. As you can see, the one that I just cut up plus all of these is what the recipe makes. So about 18 of these size little, little wings. So depending on how hungry you are, um, you know, this could be like two to four servings, I'd say. I know that Derek is very starving because he had a ton of meetings, so I'm gonna give him the majority. Here's where I really wish I had some really nice coconut milk to pour on top of this, but it is all good. So that is our delicious ramen bowl. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this deliciousness. I hope that you have fun trying to make seitan wings at home, and I appreciate you sticking through my potentially scattered thought process as I was cooking today. It's, I'm still getting used to filming while cooking, <laughs> so thank you for your patience. I promise the videos will get better and better. If you have any questions about a plant-based lifestyle, uh, again, my name's Becky. I'm a certified integrative nutrition health coach, and I help people who want to eat more plant-based or go fully vegan do so in a very healthy and holistic way and keep the health results that they see from it for life. 
So basically at the end of my program, I teach you, I've taught you everything you need to know to keep moving forward in your journey. And that includes nourishing other life, other areas of life beyond just food. We tend to think of health equals food and exercise, and there is so much more that's interconnected and you'll learn all about it in my plant-based path program. Or just comment below. I'm always so happy to uh, give some advice or suggestions or tips, whether that's for recipes or health or nutrition or whatever. Um, feel free to, to keep in touch. I would love to hear from you. I just want everyone who tunes in to feel their best in life. So with that, I'm going to go enjoy this before I head to my friend's son's t-ball game. And I hope that you have a very wonderful and nourishing day. Peace.